fermentation, while gases are getting created, those gases can get released, they escape, there's a bit of a, a pressure, it builds up, and it's a one-way valve. What I have noticed about the pickle pipes is that once the, the main fermentation is done, and there's not those gases being released, then I have noticed that air can get in, and I might get a little bit of a, a mold or a yeast on top. Again, it's harmless, scoop it off, throw it away because of that saltiness and that acidity and the lack of oxygen. Those are the three key factors that we want for pickles. Um, so once that kind of ferment is done, there's not any more gas being released, then I would remove that, stick a proper lid on it, seal it up, and then put it into the fridge or, or cold storage. And then you can reuse these. The other thing that I have on here uh, is, are these things called again? Woo! A little little glass weight, so you can get them the right size for a mason jar, and then that keeps everything underneath the brine, weighs it down, so that you can get small mouth mason jar weights or large mouth mason jar weights. And another little quick tip is here is, is a leaf, you know, a cabbage leaf, something like that, creates a mat for all the vegetables to be under. Put the weight on top, you know, be it a mason jar, something that else that fits in, one of these weights, a rock, or if you've got a large ceramic pot, it can be a, a dinner plate that goes in, put some weights on top of that, keep everything submerged. And then how long it sits is a number of different factors, right? Temperature is a factor. So the warmer it is, the faster the fermentation it's going to be. The cooler it is, the slower it's going to be. The uh, smaller and finer you've chopped your vegetables, or the, the thinner or, I mean, like zucchinis, right? A very kind of watery, uh, soft consistency, the faster that's gonna ferment versus, you know, whole dense beets or whole dense Jerusalem artichokes. That's another factor in terms of timing. And then the, the very last one is, is always taste, right? Like, is it sour enough? Do you love that flavor? Or, you know, uh, we're gonna talk about one method, which is, which is a quickle, you know, just a, just a quick little pickle where, you know, it's maybe three days or some of these recipes, you know, could even be as short as eight hours, just enough to kind of introduce the probiotics, but not like a big full long ferment. So there's tons of variables, but generally it's five to seven days, but can be as long as two weeks, three weeks, even two months or three months out. All right, another question. Yeah, so you can see that I did not peel these drew some artichokes. Uh, I didn't peel the zucchini. I didn't peel the carrot. I typically don't peel the beets. So maker's choice, totally up to you. Uh, if you want to peel them, maybe they weren't necessarily organic, you know, or, or whatever. So maker's choice, uh, you can peel or not peel. Okay, good question. So, you know, we talked a little bit about all those variables of time, you know, for, again, from just a few hours to several months, and really it all comes down to taste. So at any point you can open these up and go, hmm, you know, are those, are those carrots still crunchy? You know, how, how does this zucchini taste? Does, is it sour enough? Whoa, yeah, perfect, amazing. I'm gonna throw a lid on. And then I'm going to pop it in the fridge and, and done. All right. Great questions, everybody. We're going to keep going. So that's the basic, basic pickle. You've got that recipe in your handout. Follow it along. It's going to serve you well, right? And that's kind of the gateway ferment to launch you into all kinds of other amazing, wonderful lacto ferments. Uh, of which there have been studies. I mean, I think it was Mercola had mentioned, uh, you know, like in a tablespoon of sauerkraut, you know, depending on the brand, depending on a number of factors, but he used the example, can often contain more probiotics in a table of sauerkraut or a table of, you know, this type of fermented pickle than an entire bottle of probiotics, right? In a fraction of the cost, you're using food at the peak of the season that you've harvested or you've gone to in the farmer's market, you've gotten it, you know, fresh, amazing. It's a way to preserve the harvest, increase the flavor, the nutrients, all that stuff. 
this is the fermentation revival. This is the revolution that we need to go back to. You know, here we are, right? We've just had the, the whole catastrophe in Vancouver. We know supply chains are gonna be, you know, disrupted for who knows how long. Uh, the number one thing for sure is produce, right? We live in a society that's just in time. That's our whole supply chain, just in time, just in time is great, it's wonderful, it's a miracle, but it leaves us susceptible. So what about fresh food? How do we get nutrients from you know, the equivalent of fresh food? Well, that has always come from ferments, you know, things like vitamin C, these B vitamins that the, the ferments contain, uh, bioflavonoids, all that is, that's how we preserve the harvest and we get those uh, fresh quality nutrients year round, you know, do the cold cellars, do all that storage of your root veggies, that kind of thing. And it's great if you can grow, you know, sprouts or microgreens in your house. And I'm not saying, you know, you're not going to go to the store and you're going to buy your lettuce and do these types of things and have oranges and whatever, but uh, maybe there will be a time where you won't maybe for a week, maybe longer. Uh, but regardless, bringing this kind of thing in, we're building more resilience and more health uh, overall. And, and we're shifting that paradigm uh, from, from what we live in. Okay. Yeah. So yes. So the question was, uh, zucchinis, how do I get them to be crisp? Well, you, you've made a very large assumption that I have crispy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> zucchini pickles here yes yeah, so the, these are a little bit mushy but th there's some firmness there um so the so the answer is time right um and not the not the herb time but just a shorter length of fermentation so zucchini might be something that you're literally only going to do three or four days or five days uh cucumbers is another one there's all kinds of tricks about you know take your cucumbers put them in a cold ice bath before you ferment them uh obviously get them as fresh as you can and then it's about the time now typically cucumber pickles and actually i should mention too with with cucumbers it's also about the variety so you want pickling cukes now i gave you a recipe uh, of a relish that we'll talk about that uses literally any kind of cucumber. It could be baby cucumbers, could be, you know, like the mini cukes, the English longs. Generally, those are much higher water content uh, and they don't have as strong of a structure to them as the pickling cukes. So you really want pickling cukes if you want that classic cucumber. Um, that's going to make all the difference and then it's time as well so not going too too long on the ferment and then another thing yeah it is it's just texture so i'll, I'll kind of shift from zucchinis and I'll, I'll bring the conversation around to uh cucumber pickles now it's the pickling cukes that are the best that you can get that firmness you know and there's there's bay leaves there's oak leaves there's black currant leaves raspberry leaves grape leaves things that have tannins right to help keep that crispiness to the pickle so that can play an influence uh but if you do happen to get a mushy batch and you're like oh, i don't really love the texture of eating this you can turn it into a relish right so that's one method is you can take these you know cucumbers or zucchinis and then chop it up right don't try and make it something that it's not uh like oh i want a nice crispy uh pickle you know chop it up turn it into more of like a relish a chutney a a sauce even you know in your recipe book which we we'll probably won't get into uh every single recipe seeing how the time is flying uh you can you can puree this so i have made and we have made here at the shop we've made hot sauce and we've made ketchups and we've made relishes and other things too um, from fermented vegetables. So now you think, well, ketchup, right? Well, that's that's tomatoes. Well, not this isn't. This is actually pickled beets. It's fermented beets that we pureed and we flavored as a ketchup. This hot sauce is not just peppers, but it's actually pickled carrots as the base. So you puree it. You can take, we also did one where the puree was the base of pickled zucchini, right? super soft a total mush blend it up with some uh, pickled peppers add the heat add the spice this is a honey a garlic one so you know nothing if, if even if it's just the texture that's off th there's still more you can do with it
Okay, really good question. So Natasha, she's mentioning that she's got these pickled beets that have been going for months, apparently, and they're still quite firm. Now that you can do the cut test, right? So if you've got whole beets or they're quite dense, you cut them open. And if it's all one color all the way through, then, then they're pickled all the way through. Uh, these are still quite crunchy. They're very firm. But if you can see that just the outside is a different color than the inside, then that pickle, that fermentation hasn't made all the way through. The other thing will be the sourness, right? So taste it. Is it still sweet in the center or is it sour all the way through? And there's no right, there's no wrong. You can enjoy them as they are, however they are. You can, yeah, you can totally freeze the ferments. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, can you freeze the ferments? That was the question. Yeah, so yeah, you can freeze them. You can, if you need to, you can even heat can them as well. I know sometimes there's only so many jars that you'll be able to put into the fridge uh, to ferment, or sorry, to, to preserve. Uh, so yeah. All right, well, Denis, you're gonna hop on the mic and you're gonna call out the questions when, oh, sure. okay. as they come up, uh, that'll be easier. Okay, so we talked about pickles. Uh, as I mentioned, you can turn that into a relish, you can turn it into a ketchup, you can turn it into a hot sauce. So all those are in your recipe. That's part of the 11 different recipes, but there's, a, there's just a primary foundation of whatever you've got into salt water, allowing it some time. And uh, one variation I did add, you'll see in the recipes, I had mentioned it's optional if you want to add a starter culture, a brine from a previous batch. I'd also included whey. Some, you know, we just had a legendary session last night where we had uh, a cheesemaker uh, and the goat yogurt. You can get the whey from a lot of your dairy ferments, and then that can be added as a starter culture if you want. I know that question came up last night. Like, what do you do with the whey? That's one option. Okay. Okay, Malcolm. So I'm I'm watching here, and obviously, um, uh, it's a lot of um, you know theory, right? That uh, yeah, basically fermented foods. It's true they are condiments. It's any condiment is uh, probably going to have fermented roots too. That's like right. If you look back in the history of time. So soy I, sauce, for example. Totally. Yeah. And actually in your recipe book, we have the, I'm probably, I'm definitely not going to pronounce this yeah. right, but the Worcester sauce, right? There's some classic things. So ketchup has its roots in a, as a ferment. Uh, chutneys have their roots as a ferment. HP sauce has its roots as a ferment. And it's just, you know, mustard is just now uh, we've got these kind of modern non-fermented versions so this will allow you to kind of take it back to its roots. And a lot of these ferments, that was going to be my hard question for you, Malcolm. I, I uh -oh. came up with a hard question for you. Hard question. Uh -oh. It was like, do you, when you just add vinegar, right. instead of actually fermenting these ferments, um, yeah. these condiments, if you just add vinegar, it's, it's still a fermented food technically, right? But well, it depends on the type of vinegar, right? You know, we have that like industrial white vinegar, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't put that nearly on the same pedestal as I would a raw living apple cider vinegar, right? And uh, you can make vinegar out of any kind of a stuff, but, you know, typically apple cider vinegar uh, is very easy to access, especially with mother, that live culture. So it's going to have different types of bacteria in it, right? Primarily acetic acid containing bacteria versus lactic acid containing bacteria. It's going to have a lower pH. So there's still benefits there, but I think there's value in doing this method, uh, your salt water method, and it is, is different than vinegar. And there's, there's power to the, the vinegar method too. Okay. We got some great questions coming in for Erwin, but we're going to, we're going to uh, hold them off for a few moments here. We're going to let Malcolm actually <laughs> make something uh, make something yummy here and yeah. show you guys an, another recipe so 
you know, I got so much, maybe I tried to pack too much in and uh, it's 45 yeah, minutes, it's a, but it's okay. I want to give you like lots of diff different tips. And, uh, you know, here's an example of some garlic and some old spices and either there's even a bit of like dill in there. Now I have to admit, you know, if I get a jar of, of like pickles, right. There's always like the garlic that's in there. I don't know about you, but I don't necessarily like just eat the pickled garlic, you know, like. I do it because I know the obvious benefits. And yeah. The, but what I will do is I will save it. So it's not like it just goes in the compost, right? Is you can, so if you're not just going to like hop and munch down on like, it's basically like raw garlic. Uh, you can save it, put it aside and then put it into recipes. You know, like that's the perfect, you know, pickled garlic mm. to add to a salad dressing. Uh, it's the perfect garlic that you could then, you know, blend into your mustard or X, Y, Z, add to the chutney that we're going to make. All that right. That was a good question, but that was a good, that was actually a question. Is there any ferments you wouldn't add garlic to? And I would only say if you're, you know, you wouldn't add garlic to when you're far away from your wife for a long time. Uh, <laughs> That's why right. they didn't eat garlic in the monasteries because it is a very powerful circulatory stimulant. Yeah, it stirs the passions, they say. It stirs the passions. Yeah. That's how those medieval peasants had so many children, I think. <laughs> they, think they were they were uh, they were fired up, eh? Very uh, circular, the, circulatory stimulated. So the what, what do garlic. you have going on here, Malcolm? What's going on here? Well, let's let's jump to uh, pickled eggs. Actually, no, All no, no, right. no. Before we do that, let's do the, the mustard. I'll just walk you through. It's so easy. It's so it easy. Can, we can literally pop this recipe off in yeah. one sec here. So, you know, so instead of fermenting vegetables, now you're going to be fermenting mustard seed. Now, I like to ferment them whole. You can absolutely grind it into a flour first, but it's the same ratio, 2% salt. And literally what this is as a base, as a start is... Uh, whole mustard seeds, yellow or brown, you choose, um, salt, water, and then of course, you know, that a lot of that water gets absorbed by the mustard seeds, uh, but it's been sitting on the counter for several weeks. I knew this was coming up, I prepared it, I, I've even made some ready to go, but it ferments, so I'll, I'll typically just ferment the whole mustard by itself, and then I'll blend everything in all together uh, to make more of like a mustard puree. But you can, you know, do all your flavors, right? It could be mustard seed with garlic, with dill, with, you know, a bit of honey, you know, vinegar, so on and so forth. I've given you all that in the recipe booklet. But essentially, after the fermentation period, week, two weeks, three weeks, you choose, uh, then you throw it in the blender and then you can puree it. So here's some uh, finished mustard to which I added. So I took my uh, fermented mustard seed, which is just salt and water. We took some garlic. We added actually some honey garlic. We added uh, mm. a bit of sauerkraut juice that had uh, from the pickles. So it had like a nice dill flavor in there. We added um, some vinegar. And I think that was all. And then we just pureed it. And now you've got a probiotic mustard. So very, very easy that way. All right. Yeah, and obvious benefits to digestion, right? Mustard is this it really brings up that digestive fire so you can digest the, oh totally yeah what you yeah what you've got and it's it's uh i think i mentioned this on day one because we we're building our salad sandwich you know like mustard was primarily known and used as a herb for its mm. medicinal properties before uh we started using it as, as a condiment and it's actually making my mouth water right now smelling it, <laughs> and it yeah it smells weird but it makes my mouth water yeah and it smells good though so you know apparently it's good for headaches it's good for asthma it's good for the cardiovascular system like hypertension uh rheumatism even i i'd yeah. maybe put one of those mustard in the realm of of stirring the passions as as well so Ooh, um uh, yeah so we did pickles we talked about uh, mustard, relish, pickled onions, hot sauce, all that kind of stuff. Go through the booklets and uh, you're going to have some great success. Now, let's keep going and, and talk about some other 
recipes. I wanted to demonstrate uh, the pickled eggs because, you know, we did the sandwich. There was a lot of questions. People are really inspired about that. So you're going to take a hard boiled egg. Uh, I've just peeled it here, took the shells off and two different ways you can do this. You can take the brine from a previous batch of pickles, right? You've eaten everything. You've enjoyed it. Yeah. You've saved that brine because you know how valuable it is. You put your egg into a jar. You cover with brine, yeah. you seal it up, you put it in the fridge within, you know, two, three days, that thing is pickled. Yeah, beet and, pickles, beet juice is oh, especially beautiful. But yeah, if you, you put it in beet. You yeah. can't just brine a hard boiled egg, right? You can't just add the salt water for the hard boiled egg. Right. right. You have to start with a pH. Yeah. Because low. that's going to be safe for the yeah, the, the microbes. protein and fat we have here. Yeah. Okay. So that, that one's super easy, right? I think you were all clear with that. Now, the one that really fascinated everybody that Denise showcased, I'm going to show you how to make here. And that was the miso eggs, pickled in miso. So here's the example of it, right? So these are, what day is it today? It's Thursday. We did, you showcased them on, on, on sun, Sunday. Sunday. So Monday, I was like, I'm on that, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm making that. Here we go. So I popped them right into miso. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. But check that out, right? So you can use all kinds of miso. I used a dark red miso. Oh, man. You can see it, that color. It's just penetrating all the way through. Super delicious. You can use a light colored miso, a sweet miso. It Those all works. Some nice looking yolks. Nice looking yolks, eh? Mmm. Wow. Phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. We're going to feast on those later. So you can either, the main thing is you want the egg covered. So you can either take your miso and kind of like, you know, smush it around, coat it, or you do a layer of miso, put the eggs in, and then fill with miso and pack around. Now you'll notice yeah. I took an egg out, I put an egg in. Yeah. You can just keep reusing that miso and then you let it sit in the fridge. And you know, you can do it as early as, you know, like eight hours overnight, or you can do it as long as several days up to a week. You can just leave those eggs sit in the miso. So there that is. That's uh, nice and coated in there. I just, I, it's not even a sealed lid. It's just one of these mm -hmm. things just sitting on the, on the top of the container. And uh, there we go. Anything you want to add to that, Denis? Well, that's, a, yeah. I can only say that that was delicious. That was absolutely delectable. And yeah, it's amazing. You can just keep using the same miso over and over again. And now you can actually do this same method with vegetables too, right? This is kind of like the, the quickle, the, the miso pickle. So eggs and other vegetables, again, you just bury them in, in the miso and uh, the miso with its salt, with all of its probiotics will pickle anything that uh, gets buried in it. Yeah. And Lu Louise is asking, can we use the chickpea miso? And absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, so switch it up, use different types of misos. They'll each yeah. bring their own kind of flavor uh, to it as well. And it doesn't need to be plain, right? You can add other things to it. If you want like spice with that miso, add in some chilies or ginger, that kind of thing. And the other question from Leanne was, do you thin out the miso or was that pure miso? That was just pure miso. Yeah. Yeah, straight up as is. And then the question from Sherion is, how long are the eggs good for once you pickle them in the miso? Well, so you and I, we were both inspired by this recipe from Kirsten Shockey, who was kind of our finale on Sunday night. Uh, she's going to be talking about koji ferments, of which miso is a koji ferment. Uh, she'll be, that'll be the feature. Now, in her book, she recommends, you know, consuming the eggs within... I think it was like, you know, a week. So we'll have to go with her recommendation, but I would imagine they can last much, much longer than that. So I wouldn't worry about uh, keeping them, you know, maybe two weeks or three weeks. So that's something that I'm going to experiment with and go a little bit longer with.
just just to test it out. Now, when it comes to the the eggs in the brine, I've I've kept those like more than a month, no problem, easy. Because uh, you're you have them in the fridge in that probiotic environment, and uh, I think as long as they're covered in miso, they could be good for years and years. That's what I think. Yeah. So, but you know, I just want to tell you what Kirsten had said, and uh, maybe that's a, maybe that's a question we can ask her. You know. Okay. Okay, Malcolm. Well, it looks like you're going to share with us. Uh, you got a little recipe going. You, we have. Yeah. What have we got in that little bowl there? Okay, we got the countdown. I should tell you about uh, ketchup. So, uh, this isn't ketchup. It could be. It could considered be considered ketchup <laughs> if, if it's used loosely. I'm jumping all over the place here. So I mentioned a little bit about uh, how you can use any kind of vegetable. You puree it, but you flavor it like a ketchup. So I've got a nice little you know, seasoning suggestion. If you want to create your own ketchup, you can absolutely do it from tomatoes as well. However, the other thing, the easiest, the most simplest, I learned this from a naturopath, our good friends, Andrea and Arnell Bobrun, who, I mean, they, they have clients of all walks of life. You know, she had a little tip where you take the regular ketchup, if that's what the kids are, you know, addicted to, uh, that's what they want, you know, organic or Heinz or whatever. And, and you know, it's the grandkids, you, you got to work with, you know, family and tastes and all that stuff. She says, you know what, you just take the ketchup, you pour some in the bottle, you shake it up and you just put it back in the fridge, right? Maybe you don't even live with the kids, right? Yeah. You go to their house. Uh, so you can add the brine that way, or you've got your probiotic capsules, you know, maybe your smidge powder, you just put some in there, you shake it up, put it back in the fridge. Guerrilla fermentation. <laughs> Guerrilla fermentation. Yeah, that's one way to culture the city. And uh, so it's, it's not like a full long ferment, but those probiotics are in there. So that's maybe the quick, easy, easy way to do it. All right, so this last recipe here, which, which I'm gonna make, uh, and I've already got some here, you know, ready to go, uh, let these guys here sample it, is, is a dried fruit chutney. And you choose your, your dried fruit. I've got figs, I have apricots. Uh, I've also got some mulberries. You can do raisins, uh, you can do cherries. You can even add in fresh fruits like uh, pomegranates. It's all in your recipe booklet there. A uh, bunch of that, some chopped onion, kind of give that a toss. And then you start to add some spices. So we've got some garam masala. We've got some mustard seeds. You could add cumin. We got to add some salt. And I'm just going to reference my... Uh, yeah, and I, I think another here. word for fermented chutneys in India is achar. Achar. But it, there's... It sounds like most chutneys when... In the old days were all fermented. Yeah. Before the advent of vinegar. Right. Advent of vinegar, the advent of uh, refrigeration, all that stuff. Yeah. And a lot of the, again, the salts, the spices were there to kind of slow the rot of the food it was it was a method of preservation um and they're delicious so yeah thank god they they created that okay now we're going to add a little bit of vinegar and you can follow along on your recipe booklet see what i've got in there so dried fruits minced onion vinegar starter culture so brine from a previous batch or tablespoons, zest of an orange. I don't have that, so we're gonna skip that. A uh, little bit of honey, two tablespoons. And yeah, we got the spices, we got the salt in there, a little bit of water, just a bit extra because you know the dried fruits are gonna soak up that moisture as it sits and soaks. So I, I chose mustard seed and garam masala, you know, black pepper. If you want a bit more heat, you could do that. We just kind of give that a little toss around. And then I'm going to stick that into a uh, mason jar. And these types of uh, canning funnels are very, very handy. If you want, you could uh, re you know soak the fruit ahead of time. 
but not necessary. This is obviously going to be quite an active ferment, eh, Malcolm? It yeah, will so that's be. That's why you're giving it so much room in the jar. Yeah, totally. Because once it starts bubbling, you may want to make sure that that is not in a above like your precious family photo <laughs> album, eh, Malcolm? <laughs> <laughs> on your bookshelf that's you don't true want to keep on your bookshelf yeah and the one thing i don't want to do is go yep seal that up yeah <laughs> put that on the mantelpiece or yeah. whatever uh that so just gonna be really just really loose active for men. and you know this is another one where you can just let it sit and kind of just gently culture uh for you know eight to 12 hours overnight or you can let it sit for several days several weeks you know this one here uh has been sitting for a very long time i mean it's 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 hard to even distinguish the pieces of of dried fruit i mean i can see whole gojis but a lot of that especially the figs have just kind of you know melded into a bit of a mush so and how, uh, how long are you going to let that chutney sit i mean ferment? this will this is going to come out during christmas time you know I, i've done this as gifts in years past so about a one month yeah it's now. about a, about a month yeah i'll check on it oh man phenomenal and that's from last year and that's from last year yeah very good very good so it's got that tartness it's got the fruit flavor it's got the spice right both in the mm, what am i tasting there coriander clove clove yeah that. so you can really get creative in terms of what type of spices you uh, uh yeah, add and, and all of them digestive enhancing digestive enhancing especially that time of year right and it, and it's nice it's festive you know especially if you add in you know the gojis or the pomegranates it's going to have that nice kind of pop of of red and it can make a nice little gift uh as you go visit with with friends and family okay so i have a great question here coming in from justin marshall all right hey justin so what do you think about fermented saffron or turmeric i i want to make fermented superfood powders right for increased bioavailability how would i go about this right except adding it into your your foods yeah you know like the zucchinis are too mushy or you know the pickles didn't quite turn out whatever it is um so literally you can take those those vegetables and uh let's say it's it's turmeric you could you know pickle fresh turmeric root and then you can dry it right so so once it's pickled you take it out and maybe you probably pre-sliced it already uh or if you want to slice it up even more you can dry it now we've done this with dill pickles We've done it with sauerkraut. Uh, we've done it with uh, like pickled beets, right? And then you dry them and you can either just enjoy them as like a dried chip, like a dill pickle chip. It's absolutely delicious or a, a beet chip or yeah. even a sauerkraut. Though you they know? might be salty, though they might be salty yes. afterwards in this In this method. case. And then it's either, you know, enjoy it as a snack or you, you uh, powder it and then it becomes a seasoning. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's delicious. So I think the moral of the story is if you can, the pickling is one of the great ways you can include some of these super herbs into your diet, because as yeah. we're talking about mustard, ginger, chili powder. Yeah. Saffron. Cloves, these are all super herbs. Like yeah. the people of the past knew what they were doing when they were adding these herbs. If I could talk about saffron, I would talk about a couple hours about it because of their stories and legends and yeah, the pigment and the science about it is coming out now and full on saffron. And the color it gives us amazing. Yeah, well, yeah, we have a lot of good questions. I know we've reached 9 p.m. Right. So but we ought to just keep answering some of these questions. Yeah, hey, Malcolm. yeah let's yeah, do it. Are you, I think you pretty much I finished mean it, off your <laughs> final recipe here for the night. It was a blitz. We, we made it through. <laughs> yeah. And I think we covered lots of good, good points. And yeah, honestly, all of these recipes in your handouts are, yeah, are kind I, of riffs on the same 
Yeah, the same kind of principles. The same principles. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm glad I kind of started with the foundations. I knew it might have been a little bit of a repeat uh, for some that are more experienced, but we got it, we laid it, and we just kind of built from there. And uh, yeah, there's so much to, to explore. So you actually got a lot of good questions, Malcolm. So we're going to okay. start from the top here. All right. And we're going to try to answer as many questions as we can. But um, of course, um, let's see here. Yeah, OK, so. So there's a question from Sherry on, have you ever fermented just garlic? Oh, totally. Yeah, 100%. So I have. I think every year for the last several years, I've taught at the uh, the Garlic Fest here in Calgary, and uh, so I'll do uh, pickled garlic in this in this fashion. So you literally, instead of zucchinis, instead of carrots, instead of you know peppers, you can literally just fill a jar full of uh, garlic cloves, salt, water, boom, done. It ferments very easy like that. The second method is something that I learned from Denis, which is where you put it into honey. And uh, we have a whole video on that. Maybe we'll share that yeah, out. We'll, uh, we'll share with you the fermented honey garlic because it is a delectable. And it's one of the ways kids love taking these fermented foods. I had one beautiful mother tell me, my kids just love this fermented honey garlic. I'm so glad I learned that recipe. But that's really what we're doing with these condiments, hey, Malcolm? Yeah. We're sneaking in probiotics. That's what I do to my dad. Right. He doesn't necessarily like the sauerkraut, but I'll sneak in That's right, the Mark. fermented hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, people have these aversions to these foods and a lot of the times they're mental. Yeah, yeah. And they're just like, no, like they're acting like kids. Yeah. So you have to find the ways to sneak them in. and. Yeah, you'll really notice, you know. Okay. Oh, okay. Question about the vinegar. I don't know. This is a question from Louise Gao. Yeah, you know what? So he's doing some research on uh, pickles. So she's got a question about uh, vinegar. Yeah. And she's saying that, you know, she'd only buy it in a dark bottle, of which this is not. I know Bragg's. It's not a dark bottle either. So I don't know. You can buy it. In, so, but the theory is she's saying that she read that it helps the, the mother grow if it's, if it's not exposed to light. I'm not sure. When I was doing a little bit of research for tonight, I came across, uh, I was just looking up like different facts about, you know, this, that, and the next thing. For instance, I learned that there's a, there's a, there's a mustard museum in the States that has over 5,000 varieties of mustard on display from over 60 countries in all uh, the, the States, <laughs> every state, just weird things you learn. Uh, and then the other one, which I question actually, so uh, Americans consume eight and a half pounds of pickles a year, and uh, which I don't question that. Um, but they're saying that most American pickle producers pickle their pickles outdoors exposed to the air that i questioned they said there were no lids on it uh and that the reason they do it is so that the sunlight hits it it gets into the jar and it inhibits bacteria and yeast from going i don't know i don't know a single pickle manufacturer that pickles outdoors to the open air we're gonna have to send an operative in. <laughs> We're gonna send an operative into the in big commercial pickled mission, uh, the operations. So that was a question we had. Um, oh, okay. Any tips? So this is from Jordan. Yeah. Any tips for fermenting tomatoes? So. No, I don't have a ton of experience fermenting tomatoes. Yeah. We've made sun-dried tomato ketchup in the past, and. Yeah, and I've definitely done, you know, fermented ketchups. You can either like from a tomato paste that I've made or bought, and I, I put the recipe in there. Um, but, but yeah. What we found with the sun-dried tomatoes was that it was just way too salty. Somehow. Well, because the tomatoes we used were already salted. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. so then you we would didn't... just, if you have a salted vegetable that you're starting with, then just omit salt uh, when you add the water to create the brine. 
but beets, fermented beets made the best ketchup I think we ever made in Light Cellar. Just the beets. All right. Uh, can you use any dried fruit in the, uh, the chutney, including ones with sulfites? I, you can use any type of dried fruit. If it has sulfites, I don't know, because I've never used um, sulfited fruits. I it's tend, a good question. Yeah, I tend to stay away from those. It's a good question. We know in wine production, they add sulfites to kill yeast. the yeast. So yeah. you might have a situation on your hand where... Probably want to stay away from that. Yeah. Um, bah, 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 bah. Oh, okay. Do you know the name of the town in France powered by whey? I wrote it down. I will, I will, I will get that info and put it in the email tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so that'll be part of the links. We're getting lots of good questions. Yeah. And Ooh, comments. Yeah, lots of good oh. comments. Yeah. And then I guess uh, we got to, we got to make an announcement. It's Denise's birthday today. Oh. Do -do 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 -do. Yes. Uh, Happy birthday. I'm spending my birthday doing what I love though. And fermenting the world it's cool. only starting with calgary <laughs> next step is alberta oh next yeah. step is canada next step the whole world but oh honestly, your your reach is getting out there our friend justin he's yeah. he's tuning in from the states so and honestly when you start to look around you'll see that there's lots of this stuff popping up everywhere we yeah. don't have to go far even in calgary we started five years ago, Malcolm, doing this or more, and we're seeing so many good little companies starting, spreading the word, spreading the culture, culturing the city. Yeah. Uh, that's just the, but yeah, yeah, we have to start with our, we have to start in our own little household and it'll spread from there. Yeah. That's what we're doing tonight. All right. Well, we're going to go uh, enjoy a little celebratory mead and some cider for you. And, oh, yeah, uh, and I'm looking, I'm going to eat a few more of those uh, of your little pickled eggs there, Malcolm. Mm. Yeah. And you can try some of the artichokes as well. And yeah, these recipes came down from our grandmothers and their grandmothers and grandmothers and mothers. So yeah, this morning, my, I told my mom just, you know, so thankful. Yeah. She gave birth to me and, uh, you know, it's yeah. Doing this fermentation stuff, it honors a lot where we came from and, when we do that, you know, all your ancestors smile upon you. And I think they make you lucky in life. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know? Well, may the microbes be with you. It was a great night to spend with you all this evening. And uh, thanks for tuning in live or watching the recording either way. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow for day six going to be featuring Denis, the hunt for wild yeast, as well as Mike Foniak. He's going to be talking about uh, the sour beer revolution. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be a really special night here. Bubbly, bubbly, grab a beverage. And informative. Yes. And maybe slightly inebriated. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> by the end of the night. By the end of the night. Okay, Malcolm. Well, I'll tell, should I tell a joke now that it's like kind of sure. people I've been leaving and right, right. And okay. it's kind of a it's a naughty uh, joke. It's it's not adult rated at all. It's oh, okay. It's kind of funny though, but yeah. I remember that first the first night of the ferment fest, Malcolm. I uh <laughs> oh, right with the, I had some of your fermented mustard. Right. And then uh the next day, I, the next it day. may might not have been my mustard. It could have been any uh, number of things. But let's 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 blame it on the mustard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, there's another it's a joke. It's a okay. joke. I'm just <laughs> okay, that's uh, right. Play on words, but uh yeah. yeah, the next day I woke up and I really said to myself, wow, I really must turd. <laughs> but yeah, All right. Good joke for you guys. Okay. Yeah. Have a good night, everybody.